so welcome to my first ever YouTube video. I'm planning on making trashy videos like this that no one will really ever see. But if you ever do, consider subscribing, I guess. Um, yeah, a little disclaimer, there will be spoilers for Danganronpa 1, 2, and 3. And let's just get into it. For number 10, we have Sakura Ogami. Sakura is just a really nice character, what can I really say about her? Sakura is the ultimate fighter and she really looks the part in my opinion. I thought she was a guy when I first saw her and she had me fooled till about the seventh episode. It was pretty bad. But with how much Sakura cares about her friends, and especially Asahina, and just how sad her death was, she definitely deserves a spot in the top ten. For number nine, we have Juzo Sakakura. Originally, he just comes off as a mean security guard, no real character, but he turns into another one of the more interesting characters in the entire series, in my opinion. Throughout the despair arc, you're driven to believe that Sagakura has a thing for Yukizome, which actually isn't true. He actually has a huge crush on Munakata, which is actually one of my favorite ships of all of Danganronpa. In the future arc, Munakata just tried to kill Sagakura, but Sagakura still loves and believes in Munakata. Even when he's dying of blood loss, he tries to help Naegi and use the last bit of his life to help everyone, including Munakata. This was another one of the sadder deaths in the series, because I really thought he would survive. For number 8 we have Gundam Tanaka. Gundam's the ultimate breeder, which never really comes into play in the game or anime, due to his odd antics. Gundam is a very mysterious and just weird guy to say the least, but he's still, still a great character. In the class trials, Gundam tries to be as helpful as possible, and for certain hangman's gambits will offer a special buff. He's just really weird and he's goofy, and the whole community loves him for it, and so do I. For number 7 we have Toku Fukawa. Toku, like many of the others on this list, are just odd. Originally she's really, really shy and weird, but after the second class trial, it's revealed that she's actually genocider Jack, a bloodthirsty psycho with the hots for Togumi. In the first game, she's very unstable and crazy, but it's really an altered spirit rules where Toku really shines. She's shown to care about and protect Naegi's sister and try to do good, which just made her even more likable. Number 6 we have Nagito Komeda. He's the first character Hanada meets in Danganronpa 2 and he's your quote unquote best friend for just a little bit of the game. He's really sweet and kind, oh yeah crazy is all hell. He's obsessed with hope and will do anything for it. He'll even let someone kill him and arrange the murder as long as it will provoke hope in other students. He'll even mess with the crime scenes and withhold evidence in the name of hope. But why is he on this list? Well, Nagito is just a really interesting character with many, many layers and secrets. Nagito just wants to conquer despair and raise hope through everyone's bodies, even if his methods are a little bit questionable. Number 5 is Chiaki Nanami, aka my main waifu of all of Danganronpa. She's the ultimate gamer, or so, what more do I need to say? She's one of the kindest, most helpful characters in Danganronpa 2, and which she's just got a great personality, honestly. She's a bit lazy and tired all the time, but she cares for her friends, and Hanada especially. In the Despair arc, she throws a huge video game party for the entire class, which ends in a really weird way thanks to Teru Teru. Near the end, when Junko kidnaps Yukizome, Shaki rallies the class together and try to help, which does sadly take a turn for the worst. Shaki is forced to go through a maze with blades everywhere as her classmates are forced to watch on her monitor, making them go mad with despair. Even in her final moments in both the game and the anime, She's just thinking about her friends. My little cinnamon roll is number four. Chihiro gets introduced as a smy, sharp programmer girl who'd never heard fly, which for the most part is actually true. The only difference is that Chihiro is actually a dude. He was bullied being so girly, so he decided to live life as a girl. Chihiro is inspiration because he embraced who he really was and was not afraid to be himself. Even the way he gets killed, he goes to a water full of hope wanting to work out to be a little bit more quote unquote manly, but was sadly killed due to a water being jealous of how much the hero could accept himself. Let me explain. Up until the second class trial, Fuyuhiko is a snarky jerk who has no value for human life being the ultimate Yakuza and all, or so it may seem. Fuyuhiko and Peko have actually been childhood friends, and though Peko only believes she's just a tool to him, Fuyuhiko thinks that she's much more and cares very deeply about her. In the second class trial, Fuyuhiko tries very, very hard to defend Peko right until the bitter end. 
He ends up trying to interfere with Peko's execution, which ends in Peko accidentally slashing his eye and holding him there, thinking that she just killed her only friend and accepting death. Koyuhiko does get saved, but after that, he's stuck with an eye patch. He tries to be as helpful as possible after these events, and even splits his own stomach in hopes and forgiveness. He's a great character, and he definitely deserves his spot in the top three. Ryota Mitarai is number two. But he's a bad guy, I hear you say. But is he really? Mitarai's goal in life being the ultimate animator and all is just to make a right anime that everyone loves and has a message of hope. Sadly, Junko finds him and decides to use his talent for her own purposes. Junko uses his anime to brainwash everyone into a deep, dark despair. Skip forward to the future arc and you can see how much Mitarai hates what he's done. He didn't want any of this to happen, but he was forced to. Like many others on this list, he's shown to care about his friends and wants hope and etc. Later, he tries to right his wrongs by making another brainwashing video, but instead of despair, it's hope. He does eventually get stopped by the students from Danganronpa 2, as they promise him friendship, giving Mitarai a brand new family. As you can see, he's not a bad guy, he just tries to help a little too hard. Some honorable mentions are gonna go out to... If you know me in real life, you're really not going to be surprised. Number one has to go to... Togami Byakuya. I can't lie, I don't really have any major reasons for this. Throughout the first game, he never really tries to help, and he's always messing with the crime scenes, and he never doesn't really care about anyone. But this is due to his corporate upbringing. After the events of Danganronpa 1, he becomes one of the directors of the Future Foundation. The company does have dark motives, but Togami isn't aware of any of them. In the second game, Togami comes and actually tries to save the kids. In Danganronpa 3, he's actually shown to be making sure that everyone is okay. It isn't until Ultra Despair Girls where Togami really shines though. He tries to protect everyone and tries to help. Even if he barely ever shows it, or ever says it, he does actually care about people. Thank you to everyone who's gotten this far in the video. Well, this is all I've got for this, so bye.